Hello guys, welcome to Tech Mode and uh, today we are going to learn about the software testing principle. So, uh, that as you know the title is there, the effective software testing principle. So, software testing principles are basically kind of backbone, uh, which are the main, uh, if you are starting a, your career in a manual tester or automation tester, these principles you should have knowledge of it and you should have a basic understanding how they works and what can be done so uh, without any ado let's do one thing let's uh, start with uh, the first principle so the first principle says that the testing show the presence of defect so what exactly mean is that uh, as the word says that testing can only show that if the defects are present or not it cannot prove that if there is no defect right so uh, let uh, let me do one thing let me do one thing uh, let's do let's go to our board and see all right so uh, this is a principle one explained clearly here we have mentioned is that uh, so we have a uh, we have a test tester here who just tested our this project pro product with some bugs and right now the product is tested fully but the prop, uh, the principle says that th this testing can only show that if the defects are present, right? But and we cannot and we cannot say that that it's a pro the product is 100% defect free, right? Only testing can get those works which are present in the product when we try to test it, right? And it can only always reduce the number of undiscovered bugs, right? So this is the first principle and the basically bending blocks. And uh, so, uh, why software testing is necessary? The first the first point basically answering is that because human make mistakes. That's why we need testing in this case, right? So uh, let me show you a very simple example. Uh, uh, it's a basically a testing testing fail. Uh, let me let me do a mute for it. So basically, uh, it's a you can say it's a uh, it's it's a one of the car company who tries to test their auto brake system, right? And they just uh, it's a fully automated system. So uh, as you can see, this is a purely fail fail attempt, right? So the first principle says that only the for the so let me stop it. So uh, what exactly this video is showing is that uh, that the testing can show the presence of defects and defects will be present eventually even if it tested or not all right so we have to be careful it only reduces the number of defects but they will be there right all right and uh, so uh, we cannot say that product is under defect free uh, so 100% tested product is uh, possibly the wrong choice of word that we are going to do right uh, so this is one of the example of uh, if you know that Apple, Apple, Apple iPhone X face ID demo fail that has happened so uh, they have tested is thoroughly thoroughly means uh, they their testers are so good and they are just one of the industry standard testers but as you can see uh, let me show you with voice mode off. so as you can see that uh, this person is showing off the face face ID demo and as you can see he tried one time and it doesn't work and he tried again and doesn't work so he immediately switch switched and as you can see the reactions and after that the third attempt with a different phone works so this was this was the phase id uh, fa fail had happened so testing only shows the defects presence of defects and we are hun never 100 percent sure about it right that's all right so all right so uh, how can we uh, ensure that uh, how can we test and ensure that uh, we can have more uh, less number of defects so this there comes the test cases which will which which can find as many defects as possible right yeah. the second principle is there that uh, effective testing is impossible so all the so basically it means that all the combinations that you and the precondition are not possible to test right so let's switch on switch to our board and this is example basically uh, where we have a form which has 
input fields 1 to 12 right so uh, if we try to do, do invalid or valid test cases for it uh, if you don't know how to break this kind of things then you can check out my other tutorials and uh, where i have mentioned how to do effective test cases so i have uh, converted the test case into invalid and valid and in invalid one we have we can have empty arabic language uh, russian language and dot 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 and there can be an infinite number of test cases for it right so exhaustive testing is impossible to do unless and until we know the specific requirement that is the second principle that says about it all right okay so let's uh, move on to the third one the third one clearly say that we should do early testing if we do early testing then definitely it is possible to get the the defects as early as possible and the fi the fixing of that defects is always be less uh, less cost if we find the cost uh, if we find the defects after the uh, after or we can say nearly the release then it's a very very cost uh, expensive cost expensive bugs so in, so what should we do is that we should include our testers as well as we should do some kind of early testing right uh, let's move on to our board one and see how we can explain so it's a simple one just uh, dev generally uh, suppose this is uh, this is our axis and uh, this is our total timeline right suppose this is our timeline and uh, these guys dev plus product are always be there from the start right but here the tester who comes nearly around this time and he has only this time to test and create test cases around it so early testing i believe is should be the past of part of software development life cycle and tester should be included as early as possible to get the, those defects as early as possible. because uh, in this area tester can create his test cases ask as many doubts with product and all and get the clarification and can nearly help you find some early bugs or early requirement which are very very not important at all right this principle says that that thing all right the same thing uh, it is shown here so the let's go to the next one the next one is related to defect clustering so class defect clustering is basic example where a small number of modules contain the most defects discovered during the pre-release shows the most operational feature basically means is that the small generally uh, sorry generally the small areas as you can see in the cluster defect cluster defects are most common so generally as you can see the if we find certain defect the nearby defects are always be there so cluster defects are the part of software testing and generally we have defects which are in most of the time in the clustered mode rather than in unclustered defects right so uh, let's move on to the next one basically uh, here we are saying is that the the, the next principle says that pesti pesticide paradox what is mean is that if the same kind of test are run again and again eventually the same set of test cases will not no longer be able to find the new bugs let's understand using our board system okay so this is our board and this is our happy tester who who had this product right and he tested and created this one thing right he will try to test it again with the same test cases he will not able to find much of the bugs until and until he changes his test cases he changes his approach he changes or tweaks some uh, see some if we have he has missed something while testing and all until and until he changes something he will not able to find the bugs this is called as pesticide paradox this is one of the principle of software testing this is a very important principle actually and we should uh, if we are a manual tester automation tester experience tester we should keep in mind that if we keep our test cases same for the longer period of time then definitely we are not able to find the bugs and client will definitely will, uh, scold us and probably will miss some of the major bugs right so uh, let's move on to the next one next one is related to testing is a contest dependent so basically it means that we require different kind of testing for a different kind of product so basically means that for example here a boy is shown he can boy is shown so he can see different kind of roles right if he sees that he wanted to do something he can he become a coach while he was playing he became a teammate he can also be a parent can be a trainer so 
if we are testing a for example if we are testing a critical so, uh, safety app for example then it is a critical software very we require a different approach than when we are testing an e-commerce source, right? As you can as you can see, let me come to this diagram and show you. Uh, here, here we have clearly mentioned medical devices software needs a more testing than the game software. Clearly, the context is different in medical and game software. If we are testing a medical device, then definitely need we need more exhaustive test testing and more and different kind of approach right to test it out so that's what this principle says about all right so let's move on to the next one this is the last one properly it says that its name is absence of error fallacy so basically it means that if the system is unusable and does not fulfill the user's need and expectation then finding and fixing the defect doesn't help basically means is that if we are creating a product and we have tested out and tester say that test, uh, this product is very good and it doesn't have a defect but it's unusable and does not fulfill the user needs for example as you can see this kind of spoons with the uh, rob kind of base are useless they doesn't mean uh, they are just useless right doesn't fulfill the user's need so even if we have fully tested the front part of it that if they are working fine or not then this is basically an error fallacy right it doesn't require testing so these are the so uh, thanks for watching basically and these are the main principles that you have to keep in mind if you are experienced tester manual tester and all so uh, if you have any doubt you can go to these websites and i have a template as well at certain kind of more tutorials on scrolltest.com so that was it uh, the uh, i hope you liked it thanks for watching thanks for your time and uh, do share like and subscribe and let me know how do you feel about this video and probably will come with, come up with a new uh, this kind of videos in future also so thanks a lot guys and uh, see you in the next one bye